hello my friends welcome back we are here with a clearly very impromptu video because i'm sitting in the car outside of starbucks waiting for adam to finish a meeting but a couple of you guys asked for some real time like current true crime videos and i just so happened to stumble across this case last night and it blew my mind i think it really tugs on my heartstrings because it's about a man who's accused of burying his six-year-old in the backyard as punishment so he did it more than once and it kind of tugs at my heartstrings maybe more than the average person but like who wouldn't <laughs> except for somebody cuckoo like that it reminds me of some stories that i heard one specifically that i'll tell you at the end of this some of the men the fathers in that the religious cult that i grew up in for you guys that are my ogs i'm sure you know that i grew up in a religious cult for you guys that don't know i will post the video up in the cards although it's an old like crazy one i was all over the place it was just a really difficult video for me to make just know that you're fairly warned when you watch that video and you're like girl take a breath slow down maybe get some add medication i understand i'll tell you that story at the end it was awful but let me tell you about this current case first <laughs> The man who is being accused of allegedly burying his daughter in the backyard, among many other things. His name is John Kraft, K-R-A-F-T, spelled just like the cheese, and he is from Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. Waynesburg is about 53 miles south of Pittsburgh. From the photos that I saw of this man's house, and I'll post them in here as we talk through this horrible case, it looks like a very rural area of Pennsylvania. Photos of the area are gorgeous because it's like the fall leaves right now, but just like a very rundown, desperate, rural Pennsylvania town reminding me very much of the town Bradford where I used to go visit when Adam was in Pennsylvania. The investigators and the DA are saying that this is one of the most severe and extreme cases of child abuse that they've ever seen. Allegedly, Mr. Kraft, Mr. Kraft, there was a T at the end of there, choked his daughter to the point, she's six, six you guys choked his daughter to the point of her passing out hit her he would beat her bang her head off of the wall and the floor if he thought she was lying not necessarily if she was lying but if this crazy man thought that his daughter was lying to him which i'm assuming somebody that buries their daughter in the backyard has mental health issues so he probably thinks she's lying to him all the time she would have to go into this hole in the backyard one of the allegations says that he threw her in this hole in the winter one time it is an hour outside of pittsburgh you know how cold it gets in pittsburgh in the winter and he threw her in that hole and had her stay there overnight and her older brother so he does have other children i think they all endured child abuse but for some reason, he took it all out on this little six-year-old girl. Poor baby. I don't know why. Her older brother did say that he remembers at least one occasion where the dad threw the daughter in the hole because he accused her of lying. So as punishment, and she came back in the house smelling like sewage. Now there is a wife, but it's not the daughter's mother. So his current wife said that she tried to intervene at least once by giving the daughter a bath after she came in from the hole. I'm sorry, what? That's your intervention? <laughs> what? As of now, Mr. Kraft has been arrested and he's in jail, but this current wife who lived through all of this, who intervened by giving the girl a bath after she was stuck in a hole overnight in the middle of the winter, <laughs> is still living in the house and there haven't been any charges pressed against her yet. The house that they are living in, they've been renting for at least the past three years. The owner of the house, so they're renting the house from this person, his wife came in and she made a comment. Guys, this was like, this part was weird to me. She said that she has called, they call it CYS, I guess in Pennsylvania, which I guess is CPS. Even in New Jersey, it's DIFUS. So I guess in different states, it's called different things, but child youth services is what they've been calling it on the news broadcast that I've listened to. So I guess in Pennsylvania or this area of Pennsylvania, that's what they call it. She said she's called CYS, which Child Protective Services on multiple occasions but then she said like when she goes to visit the house at least once a year what like i don't understand she said that she remembers at least once from outside of the house hearing mr craft yelling at the kids the kids crying and then what it sounded to her like allegedly was the sound of him hitting the kids she also saw cigarette burns on these children but she called cps at least once a year like 
what? There was something about this interview and I'll put in some of the footage, but there was something about this interview with this woman that I found disingenuous. I found, I felt like maybe it was self-preservation, maybe her 15 minutes of fame. I don't know. But at the very end of the interview, which I found funny, me paraphrasing, but she was like, people could have done more. These poor children, we did wrong by them. People, including myself, could have done more. But when I saw something, I called. It makes me feel disgusted and sad for the kids because I feel like a lot of pe different people failed them. This one specific incident was I saw cigarette burns on the kids. So I could hear them inside and I could hear John yelling at the kids and the kids crying and what sounded like him hitting them. She says despite multiple reports to CYS, her calls went unanswered. I feel like a lot of people failed them and that even maybe myself, I feel like I could have done more. But when I saw something, I said something and it was out of my hands at that point. I don't, to me, like something is oddly suspicious about that because if she was that hell bent on helping these children and she called a few times and she did what she had to do, like her due diligence was calling once a year. And then she comes on the news and says this, like you guys let me know in the comments what you think, but something doesn't feel right. I feel like she's trying to save CYA cover your you know what by publicly putting this out there that she made these calls does that make sense or is it just me maybe i'm just reading into it i don't know what started it but finally there was an investigation into mr craft's behavior and the alleged child abuse this started last month in september 2022 i don't know who made these claims but it started because of severe bruises on this little baby girl's face and her body so when the little girl, she's six years old, again, so that's what, first grade? Maybe she's in school, maybe that's who saw it. So when this little baby was being interviewed, she said that her father did beat her with a belt, with a metal, you know, the, the metal buckle on there. And he did beat her with his arm, which you guys has a metal rod in there. Cause you know, if his just normal arm with bone in there wasn't bad enough. She also stated that he would use a shovel to dig a hole and then cover her with mud and dirt when he thought she was lying. So this is out, out of this little girl's mouth. And also the story is corroborated, co co corroborated, I swear. <laughs> the story is corroborated by her older brother who said the exact same thing at a different time. When neighbors were interviewed by the police and investigators, they were shocked. They were like, he seemed fine. Nothing stood out to the neighbors about them and the kids were really sweet. One neighbor specifically, James Fawner said, I, I thought he was all right. I thought his kids were real sweet. You'd never think of that. And my question is, if he has kids, as in multiple children, why this poor little baby girl? Is it because she's a girl? I know that she has one brother. I don't know if there's other children involved. Currently, he is in jail. The wife is not. I'm sure eventually, I would assume there would be charges pressed against her. And the DA commented saying that he's facing a number of charges that are very severe and barbaric in nature. He didn't say anything about the mother. I think that they were gonna press charges against her. I mean, you guys let me know what you think in the comments. Her version of helping was giving the girl a bath. She might've been fearful for her life as well. She might've been being abused as well. I'm gonna assume she was, but you're still assisting in endangering a minor or minors in my opinion. I don't really, I don't know the law like that, but I'm gonna assume that she's gonna get something more than at least a slap on the wrist. They did say that the children have been removed. They are in a safe place. The news did contact CYS about all of these alleged phone calls that had been ignored and they refused to comment. They said that they can't comment on cases that are currently open and being investigated. The DA also said because of the nature of this case and because of barbaricness, is that a word? Because of how barbaric it is and because it is against children, they have a zero tolerance policy and they are planning to prosecute to the fullest extent of the law. There's a pl preliminary, I can't say these words. <laughs> There is a preliminary hearing scheduled for November 7th, which is next week or two weeks. So I will definitely keep you guys posted because this case intrigues the hell out of me. Why? Because it reminds me so much. I don't know why. Like there's nothing religious that I found about this man. But then again, like there's nothing on the internet about this man aside from what I found on him yesterday with this case. And I didn't really dive that deep into it because hello, I'm sitting in the car. It's been a crazy day, but I did want to talk about this because it just tugs at my heartstrings. But when I was in sixth grade, sixth grade, you guys, what is that, 10 or 11 years old? I had a teacher. This teacher started, he was one of the founders, one of the two founders or the 
coordinators of this cult, this religious cult that my parents joined. I was in it, thank God, for a very brief period in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Now, fifth, I went to school on Long Island. My parents would travel back and forth to go to like cult activities. But sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, I did go to this cult school. So he was my teacher in sixth grade. And he was so proud to tell my class in sixth grade this story, okay? So this story is about his five or four, four or five-year-old daughter, but he's telling 10 or 11 year olds this and he's proud to tell us this and I don't know why it's bizarre and I guess he's telling us this story because there was a bug in the classroom and a bunch of us myself included were afraid of this bug and he was like oh well this is what I did to my five or six year old daughter when she was afraid of a cockroach a cockroach a cockroach he was like go pick up the bug and she was like what no daddy and she started crying i'm afraid of the bug and he's like go pick up this bug if you loved jesus you would understand that he's going to protect you no matter what so he will protect you jesus is bigger than this bug so he's going to protect you from the bug go pick it up and he forced his crying baby girl who was only four or five years old and petrified of this cockroach the man who's supposed to be the human protector of this child no matter what you believe in that god was going to protect her and she needed to go pick up this bug is that burying your daughter in the backyard no but it just reminds me of the type that would do this like you have to be sick and twisted in the head to do these types of acts to children and he did he forced her to do it and i'm not going to tell you what happened to this girl to this day because I, it's unfair to her but i will tell you what happened to that man if you're curious he died a very very gruesome and do I want to say tragic death? I don't know. He had a very, very, very severe bout with, uh, I want to say it was either Lou Gehrig's or it was throat cancer. One of the coordinators had Lou Gehrig's and the other one had throat cancer. I think he was the throat cancer, but he suffered. He died young. I want to say like maybe mid fifties, early sixties. And there are the facts and I won't say how I feel about it, but I'm sure you guys can guess. There's that. I will be back with an update on this video. I just wanted to give you a real time case because you guys asked for it. It's so sad, you guys. I don't understand. You have to be some sort of sick, twisted individual to do this to children, to do anything of the sort to children. And when I first read this, I thought he buried her alive, like to death. I don't know. Like, thank God she's still alive. And thank God they saved her at six years old. But the trauma that you've inflicted on a six-year-old girl, and this isn't the first time, this has been happening for at least three years that we're aware of because the landlord's wife says that they've been rented to, renting to them from three years. So I'm gonna assume, or for three years, so I'm gonna assume that this has been happening since at least three years old. The trauma that you've inflicted on this little girl, God. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one. Mwah.